this evening and we will call the meeting to order and then please those that want to pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, item number three, roll call. Uh, all of the council members are present except Brian Herbert, who we know is probably out in Yuma, Arizona, as of right now, catching up with the wife. Sorry. Uh, silence electronic devices, please, and we will move along to number four on the additions for approval of the agenda as presented. I have one addition. Okay. okay. If we could do 4A, and that would be uh, our city attorney, Sue. For what purpose? Uh, she will say that. She will state that. Okay. Um, as it relates to? Okay. Um, and then under 4A, we'll just say, is that the wishes of the council? No. Good. That's okay. Go ahead, right. Sue. And then... <laughs> And then I have uh, something that was just presented to us just as we walked in the city resolution 2019-10, which is uh, preparing plans and specs uh, as it relates to, um, and it could be buried, I shouldn't say that, but it should be in the consent agenda. There's no reason for us. There's a slight change that's going from the co-op effort that we're working with our neighboring uh, St. Augusta and it will be our engineers versus their engineers. So that's a slight change. So we'll put that into uh, F, section F, 2019-10. Uh, that's the resolution. That's the wishes of the council. Seeing no objections to that. Uh, any other additions? If not, a motion would be in order. So moved. Second. Motion's been made by Don, seconded by Bill to uh, approve the agenda, uh, to approve the agenda with the two slight modifications. All those in favor, oh, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by stating aye. Aye. Contrary, same sign, any abstention, seeing none, passed. Okay, if that's the case, uh, Sue, uh, please uh, address who you are and then please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Susan Catholic, City Attorney. I, I was asked to come here today because I, I think questions arose after the special council meeting that took place earlier this week. Uh, it's my understanding that there was a, a, an agenda, the, the meeting was duly noted, but at the meeting an item was added to the agenda. And so the question came up, is that something that can be done at special council meetings? I did do some research today on that, uh, and it's my opinion that, you know, under Best practices is something you want to avoid at special city council meetings because when you're doing a special council meeting, there, there's a separate meeting notice requirement for special meetings that isn't present at your regular council meetings. So you're free to amend your agenda at your regularly noted city council meetings, but special meetings require date, time, place, and purpose be noticed. So that has to be in the agenda, that has to be in the notice. Uh, before um, the, the council meeting occurs, so the question remains: you know, what what's going to what's what happens to what was acted on at that special city council meeting that wasn't on the agenda? And under my research, that the action is still valid. The action you took is still valid. Uh, the question is: you know, was this a violation of the open meeting law? It's certainly not best practices, and I'm going to advise you, you know, in the future, you stick to the, the published agenda when you're looking at a special council meeting. Uh, but I don't believe there was any requisite intent here to uh, avoid public discourse on the issue. Uh, there hadn't been any special requests for notice regarding the issue that was, was acted on. I understand it was a, a benefits, uh, change in the benefits for the city employees. Um, I, I don't think there's any real actionable um, occurrence under the open meeting law. It's just something that in the future, because council members are individually liable for 
their actions under the open meeting law violation, I would say that best practices will stick to the, the actual agenda at special council meetings. Sue had a question. Hold oh, just a second. I believe Mr. Bodie had given a directive to me, and we agreed, and the directive would go directly to me, and then if I feel it's important, then we will proceed. Is that a correct statement? What? Uh, I, the, we want to make sure that tonight everything stays in order, so I've asked the mayor to be sure to follow parliamentary procedure in that questions to the council should be directed to the mayor, and questions from the council to staff should also be directed to the mayor. Let's just point everything to the mayor tonight, and then he will ask the appropriate questions after that. Well, the question I have then is, I have looked back at minutes for years, and as part of my membership on this council, we have been doing this forever. And I understand now that hearing you is not a good practice, but we've been doing this forever. And, and so, and, and Bill, that's, that's a great statement. And I think the important thing for us tonight to take heed to what our legal counsel gave to us and then continue to proceed. And later on, and when I get into the mm -hmm. our mayor's, uh, I use some choice of words and I attempt to do that. And I don't always get it right. Last month was a prime example where I might have not had a full uh, thought process. Tonight, my words are going to be very succinct. but. Stay tuned. We'll have to wait until we get to that portion. Okay, uh, Sue. Thank you for those comments. Uh, richly deserved. Uh, we shall take that to heart, and I hope that the public understands that. So, anything else? Uh, any other council members that you care to address at this point, as it relates to Sue's comments? If not, I will uh, proceed into item number five: public comments, three minute maximum. Um, no sharing, allocation of minutes, statements only, no dialogue, and this is the time when we historically are asking for public input. Anything as it relates to the governance of the City of Rockville, um, advance to the lectern and announce your name and address for the record, and then before I get to that, I have an exhibit A that I'm going to be reading at this point, and that is um, to the council members, um, it's, it's basically, there is not a remedy in the open meeting law that reverses or avoids the public body's actions or decisions made during an illegal and, and, and illegal meeting. The penalties or violations of the open meeting law are court-imposed fines, and in some cases, forfeiture of office. In addition, no government entity investigate, investigates OML, that's open meeting law violations or otherwise enforces the law. All enforcements must be done through the court system. Those are the precise words that I sense that our legal counsel just shared with us. We have to take our job very serious about open meeting law breaches and uh, so that was something that just reinforced it. So at this point, uh, please proceed. Rick Tallman, 25594 Lake Road. I'm going to speak about what you just spoke about and Bill, you had said you did a lot of research and it's been done forever and if you heard the city attorney, you can do that at a regular meeting. Very few special meetings have ever taken place. A lot of workshop meetings have been taking place within the council even when I was on there. Those are a special meeting. Any meeting of the council outside of a regular meeting is considered by open meeting law a special meeting. Now, adding to the agenda on that, as you just heard, the attorney is not best practices. That's an attorney speaking. It's against the law. I checked with the office administration at the, at the state level, and it is against the law. Now, when we get a copy of the actual posting for that and a recording of that meeting, then we'll find out how to proceed from there. Thank you for those comments. Tony Thurman, that's 211 First Street West. I don't get here very often anymore, so I thought I would check. We do have an EDA committee, don't we? Do they, uh, is there any, uh, 
work being done to see if we can get a gas station open again on Main Street? <coughs> um, this would be, we, we was brought up recently and we are asked not to interact, but uh, we do have an EDA and the EDA has been uh, dormant for probably close to five years. There's a shell okay. group that's there. So it's still, yeah. it's still dormant, so nobody's doing anything. Alcohol. Not from the city. Privately, I know that there are people. Okay. Including myself, in case you're wondering. Okay. Thank there's you. others. <clears throat> others. Hi, Amy Grinstenner, Huber Lane, 1279. Um, if someone could explain how the cola developed. I've heard some, I emailed all of you last night, I only heard back from the uh, it's not here. He told me to talk to you, Bill, finally today because he couldn't produce the data. And I need to looking. apologize because so, I cannot send on my business email. Okay, so. well, and so um, <coughs> what I gathered from his email response is December, the budget passed. And the budget, he said, included a COLA. And so we are already paying 2.9% for the cola, but 2.5% is going for the cola, and there's a 0.4% that will, we don't know where that is, but it's going to be rolled into the general fund probably at the end of the year. Do you see my confusion? If this was voted into the budget in December, what was happening on Monday? Where, so if you could just re-explain the trajectory of how this all developed, I think that would help a lot. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you for those yeah. comments, and uh, later this evening, near the end of my remarks, I will be reaching out, and we're re re reinstituting listening and learning sessions, so at that point, anyone that wants to stay after this evening, that's going to be our first official listen and learn session, and there was no COLA uh, spelled out, there was a 2.9, uh, there was a certain percentage of um, uh, administration fee, but COLA is not a line item in the budget. And so we'll tune in on that one later. Uh, there's a lot of miscommunication and myths that are out there. So thanks for being involved in the governance of the city of Rockville and participating. Continue. Uh, Dwayne, yes, we're please. still open. Um, I just need to tell everybody that my email does not work for the city. So those of you who emailed me, you didn't get a reply because I can't do it right now. I just want you to know. Thank you. We are very appropriate. Carol Dittman. Uh, 10059 County Road 47, St. Cloud, <clears throat> Rockville. Uh, first of all, my husband would like to extend a compliment to whoever it was that plowed um, 230th, all the street, uh, eight, oh, let's see, Lake Road going south in that area. Richard's driven semi, he's big trucks. Uh, and on down the line, uh, and he thought that person did a fantastic job compared to what's been done in the past. We will convey that so, information. Very nice. Let Thank him you. know that. Very nice. And then also, um, yeah, I've got concerns too, and so do a number of other people about the rate increase for the staff. And that was expressed at the December meeting. I wasn't here at the January meeting, but um, really. You know, um, I won't get into it any further. It's just a little bit out of line compared to what the majority of people around here have been going through for their raises, what they've been getting. And as far as our attorney is concerned, if it's not best practices, then that means it's wrong. Thank you. Thanks for his comment, Carol. Others? <clears throat> I'll make a second call out. Has everyone else spoken first before we allow a second time? There's procedure. We don't allow a comeback. And I believe that if, if it is relevant to city ordinance or city, we'll make it briefly and then we're going to continue. This will be the last one. We're going. I just wanted to ask how many of you have received phone calls or emails? of people in support of the sewer increase. Because I bet you've received a lot that are against it. And you haven't received any that are for it. And it goes through. 
I don't understand. Okay. We will address that during our new process. Thank you for those comments. Okay, any last questions? If not, I don't see any other racing for the lectern at this point, so we will continue to move forward. The public comment section of number five is completed. There will be a public hearing at number seven. In the meantime, we have consent agenda number six. We have added the one additional item, and that is under 6F, as I alluded to earlier, and that is just a clarification that the joint effort of the uh, uh, summer project, hopefully that will work this summer, we'll have our engineer, uh, Walton Mank, doing the work rather than uh, our neighbor, St. Augusta. So that's the one that's added. If anybody wants to have clarity on that, Mr. Bode certainly has information. All of us up here have information. We should have read it prior to our commitment. So with that, the motion would be in order. I have a question before we make the motion Please about B as in boy, the, sure. the council minutes. Yep. Uh, if we look at item number 14, on um, what page? Is it two on there? Page 25. Okay. Very last item. Uh, Mayor suggested the city administrator work with the League of Minnesota Insurance Trust Conflict Resolution Department along with the city attorney to avert threatened or pending litigation. I questioned you, Dwayne, what that was. You didn't elaborate. Uh, Mr. Bowie, is there a litigation against the city? Long answer. I can, I have no idea if there's, I have not received any, any, any paperwork. Okay, no, there's nothing. I just want to clarify. That. Yeah, no, there's nothing. It was just merely the potential of, of what I was conveying okay. at that time, Bill, was just merely that, say, give them an alert to the council members that if there is a, if there is a uh, litigation that Mr. Bode would be aware of it and so that we would have Susan to be available. That's okay. what that was all about. No, there's nothing. There. Then I'll make a motion to Okay. Mr. Mayor, I wonder if we could ask the attorney if the action that was taken on February 11th was rescinded and, and re-voted on at this meeting. Okay. If that would that would be out of order at this point. We're working on the consent agenda. And that, and that is the consent agenda. agenda. February 11th meeting. The, He's talking about the, uh, uh, the construction resolution, right? No, I'm talking about the minutes from the February 11th workshop. Oh, okay. What, what's the question? My question was, if those, if the COLA that was voted on February 11th was rescinded and we voted on now at this council meeting, if that will clear things up. It would up. take the next month before we can do that type of action and we'll be talking about that later as to, but with the action that was taken, it, that would really be out of, uh, out of order at this point, Jerry, seriously. If we are going to take any action at all, it would have to be deferred until next month so that we can get public okay. input. Okay. okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda including with, F. With, with the amendments without reading it. Yep. Thank oh, you very much. Is there a second? I'll second that. Motion to accept the consent agenda as presented, including item F. Um, discussion. Oh, seeing Don, there was a motion by Bill, seconded by Jerry. Uh, no, sorry, Don. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by stating aye. 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 And those contrary, any abstentions passed unanimous. Public hearing. This portion of it will be for the fee schedule. It's fairly complex. <coughs> Before I go into there, I'm going to be reading Exhibit A, and this is my version of how I keep some semblance of, of uh, process up here for you, the secretary. But anyways, uh, whenever we have a public hearing, and this is right from the Minnesota Mayor's Handbook, and so this is basically for public and council members. A public hearing is a special type of city council meeting or a portion of our city council meeting designed to solicit public input and allow members of the public to express their opinions on a designated topic. Conducting a public hearing can pose difficult challenges for America, you know, and it keeps on going into the next, uh, next paragraph. There are two types of public hearings, those that are discretionary and those that are required by a specific state ordinance and or charter provision. We subscribe underneath a state statute. We're a state statute city. Discretionary public hearings. Many city councils will hold public hearings even when not legally required to do so. 
Generally, hearings of these types are for the purpose of allowing the public to comment on a specific issue of interest to the community. Such hearings can be helpful in raising concerns about issues that the council may not have considered. And then there's certain that are required public hearings, and that is if we have zoning changes and there's lots of them. This happens to be discretionary other than for a portion of the fee structure that does have a change in um, the fee for alcohol and or tobacco. Those are mandated by state that we have, uh, not discretionary, but those are mandated. So at this stage of the game, the biggest portion of the um, fee structure that has been circulated for some time is discretionary other than that portion of it. So I just remind you that this is an attempt for the city council to reach out to the public so that you, the public, can understand what it is that we're doing. And a lot of fee structures we attempted to do it taken care of last year. We did not get it accomplished. We now have a new city council, or two of the new city council members, and one of them being absent tonight. So if we, he was very much involved. And so tonight, if there is, after public hearing, and if the council sees that it is worthy of us to postpone the decision as to fees, all, some, however it gets carved out tonight, I believe it would be wise for us to at least have, uh, you know, for us to make a decision a month from right now really doesn't make a bit of difference. And uh, Brian was very much involved in the process, and so I think preparing that. But enough said. Please proceed. Anyone that wants to advance to the lectern at this point to talk to the council as it relates to public hearing, and this is the proposed ordinance 2019-94-5, and that's updating of the city fees and charges. There's, I believe, uh, seven, eight, eight, eight pages. Now's your opportunity. Is this one, I believe, is, is we had started with three minutes, correct? So, anyways, we'll see how it goes here, and if I need to gavel somebody down, I will. Please proceed. And you are? Rick Tallman, 25594 Lake Road. The fee schedule as presented, uh, most of it all looks good. I think most of the concern is the very last page, which is the uh, increases for the water and sewer. I'd just like to say that in the water and sewer discussions back in 2015, when we did much smaller changes than what are proposed here, we went through lots of material. And tonight you have one page of opinion. There's no facts to base these increases on. There's been none given. When I sat in with the mayor, with the city staff, and we discussed these rates way back in 2017, the only justification for the rate increases that was given was our rates are too low. Our rates are currently meeting the budget, so they're not too low. So proposing these rates to go up by the sewer or the water, two dollars for each tier, the sewer going from $1.22 to $2, and the sewer for the lakes going from $54.86 to $65 is unjustified because you don't have the data to back it up. Minnesota state law for charging for services, your, sur your charges, it's not a, a, an option. They must be commensurate with what you are, you are giving. You are providing the service. This does not show any data to back up these rates. So I ask you to consider waiting to vote on these increases for the water and sewer until you have the appropriate data. I just did a little more research, and I did this on the city audits. And just for an example of in the city audits, you can see where uh, wages and benefits have come out of the water and sewer. Wages and benefits, wages in 2012 were 26,692 out of both the water and the sewer. 2017, that's the latest audit that's on the left website, was $72,869. That's a 173% increase. 
The benefits back in 2012 were $5,337. In 2017, they were $22,605, up 323.6%. So if the raises in the rates are needed for more staff raises, that, that's what the evidence shows. That's what the data shows. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the comments, Rick. Others, please? Yeah. <clears throat> Brandon Wilmer, 25123 County Road 139, St. Cloud, Minnesota. Um, I'm here representing John Clark Co-op Residence. I'm the administrator there. And it's getting to the point that they, we can't afford the fees that's being charged for the water. So I hope you look at that. Plus, I've been here a couple times talking about the um, uh, fees per unit, uh, per meter. Uh, my stipulation or my idea that we have line out. So hopefully you can look at those numbers again. Thank you. Thanks for those comments. Mm -hmm. And I'm here not to complain as a senior citizen or as a widow that I can't pay for my water and sewer, but I think that a service, all the years I came to these meetings, the, the sewer and water fund is a service and should not be making money more than <coughs> what it takes for the service. So if we are in the black, we shouldn't have anything raised, even if I can't afford to pay for it. Thank you. Thanks for the comments today. <coughs> George Bechtel, the man of that's the Bay in Rockville, 244 Broadway Street. It's getting to the point that's no longer you know, that, that it almost isn't feasible to stay in business in Rockville. And they keep bumping these fees on, and there's absolutely no, um, no support from the city uh, as far as the city offices or staff, whatever. I'm not going to say staff. But as far as um, getting any uh, any concessions from the city, as far as getting signage or anything, that you know, why do I stay in Rockville? Oh, nice. yeah, and then you keep bumping prices and bumping prices, you know, and raising the stuff, and you know, some something's got to give somewhere along the way. Thanks for those comments, George. Amanda Fella. I'm on 340 Cedar Street and without a justification for the water raises I don't see why you guys are raising the prices because we all have families to keep this so. Thanks for those comments Amanda. <coughs> Thanks for those comments, Carol. 
Um, there seems to be a, I, I think there's a, a clear message that's being sent and additional public input will probably continue that. Um, I can't speak for the other council members, but as the mayor, I hear you loud and clear. Um, so unless there's some other new, new compelling um, information, I would just assume that nobody's breaking their leg to try to get up to the podium. So if uh, there's last minute chance, if not, the motion would be in order to close the public portion of the, uh, the public hearing portion of the fee schedule. I'll make that motion. Is there a second to that motion? I'll okay. second. Motion by Bill, seconded by Jerry, to clear, close the public hearing portion of the 2019 fee schedule. And uh, so at this stage of the game, um, what is the wishes of the council? Well, I'm gonna speak first because I'm the new guy on the block. And uh, we've had this a while and I've been doing a lot of research on it. Uh, I'm probably the worst scenario uh, on this page uh, if it did get approved. Um, looking at this as a business and as a businessman, um, water should pay for water. And in some of my research, uh, some of the, the tower stuff on the water towers, the antennas, that money is being brought in to keep yours and my water rate, I, don't, I got my own well, your water rates, down, okay? So let's just say, as in a real case scenario, those antennas go away. They drop their lease for about 50 grand. That 50 grand was going to the water fund. Now what do we do? So I'm learning. I'm going to go back and say, water should pay for water, sewer should pay for sewer. And if we make money above that, then we use that to keep the infrastructure alive and well. Well, sorry, it wasn't a pun. <laughs> uh, uh, to, to pay for the infrastructure of the water system and the sewer system. You know, and I, I, I've looked at other, other cities' rates. I've, I've got them. I've spent a lot of time on this. Um, but I'm the new guy on the block. And I don't have a lot of numbers that I can justify saying, you know, let's crank it up two bucks. Let's leave it alone. If we leave it alone, where are we going to get the money to pay for it? So the third time I'm going to say this, water should pay for water. That's all I have to say. Great. Other comments? Yeah, I uh, probably should be one that be in favor of jacking this up because a, a substantial amount of money from the general fund goes to support this, and I don't use water or sewer. But I don't think that that's the answer to our problem. The problem we have is we've got a great big water tower and water system out by Pleasant Lake that needs more homes. And it gets more in depth than that. Uh, that is part of the reason I supported a subdivision moratorium because we need to move that land out there. And if we keep promoting different subdivisions within the city, it's competing with what we need to get rid of. And in order to bring the cost of this operation down, we need more online. There's a, a subdivision potentially getting going to happen north of town, uh, and we're figuring out ways to get around our uh, rural residential so we can squeeze more houses in, and that's in direct competition of what we have out there. We need to do something to get this land out there developed and get houses out there and bring the cost of this operation down. That's why I supported a moratorium. And I'd be totally in favor of that, but what I will tell the council is within the next six months or one year, we need to get off our dust and do whatever it takes to get that land sold and get some homes in there. That's the, uh, going to solve the problem to this. And if we keep raising these sewer rates and water rates, it's going to be even tougher to get homes in out there. So I think we need to keep a lid on it. I think we need to solve that problem out there first. What, what problem, Jerry, if I could ask? To get homes out there. Oh, okay. and that, uh, I'm trying to think of the addition. Brentwood. Brentwood addition. 
and the Voigt's land out there. There's property out there that needs to be developed, and I think we need to do whatever we can so people build out there first and get people on the system. The more homes we got, the less cost it's going to be for home. That's what I think the answer to the problem is. Okay. Donald, want to chime in? No, oh, I'm just okay. Take I will make a motion to table this until we can come up with an answer to what I just proposed. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Before I go and ask and call the questions, I'd like to just quickly add some discussion to it. And that is, <clears throat> if you looked at it, the last um, two years ago, in our annual report, and I'm a numbers guy, I, we all are up here, um, there was a, a um, the annual, we have our annual audit, and that's what we have to base it on. 2016, there was a slight increase of water um, net position of the Water Enterprise Fund, and it went from 217,000 and there was a question that was asked, is there facts that we can relate to so we as a council can make an informed decision, not the myths that are out there. So <clears throat> at $217,087 at the year end of 2016, and it increased, or 15, and it increased to 265426 which is a gain of $48,000 for that year. The very next year in the net position, and there's lots of different ones, but the Water Assure Enterprise, um, it went from 265426 which was the same as the year before, and it reduced to 182496 So we lost, if, it's, if we're listening to the auditor that reviews our numbers, and they're the ones that we have to believe, it reduced our Water Enterprise Fund by $82,930 in one year. To that end, what is causing that, that's not going to be debated tonight, and that's going to take some issues. What is it going to take to get out? Now we have to realize 2017 was the year that we had a water main break over on Chestnut Street. To this point, nobody really knows how much water, but we can have a fairly close guess, so that's slightly skewed. We don't know yet at this stage of the game in 2018 uh, because there is no audit yet completed at this point. So once the audit is in, that we know what exact numbers amount of water that we pumped, how many gallons were sold, because the pumping and the sold is not the same thing. There's roughly 10% of water in a lot of communities, ours included, that is unaccounted. It's lost. It's either we have water leak someplace, we have, and I'm not trying to scare anyone, that's not the case. We have lots of water that's being used, fire department occasionally, and that's accounted for. We have water flushing, all of those type of things. And recently, Bill just alluded to something, and I believe we already acted on it. Recently, the Water Tower Antenna <coughs> Rental Company opted not to renew their several year lease. We know that that's happening, but we have water that that there is revenue that's coming in that's going directly into the water enterprise fund that we're like manna from heaven. That is water, that's funding that's coming into the water enterprise fund. That has now curtailed one of those companies. Is it Tomatic 50,000? I don't think so. Well, I, less. But I, uh, that's why this is skewed and I think our new city administrator for a couple of years walked into this mess and then now all of us are inside this mess. Yeah. And again, water should pay for water. That antenna should not pay for water. Because when that antenna comes down, then that does come back price. Very good. And so we're getting back to the same point that I tried to make. Just a second, let's keep stability here. Uh, not stability, but I mean, we're focusing on here. And so that we don't have too many meetings going on now. Fairly. And don't believe in having some committee meetings <coughs> going on at the same time we have regular meetings. Going on. So now, go ahead, please. Uh, I don't, Marty, maybe you know how many thousand gallons of water we dumped on oh, that tower. I'm not. sorry. By, well, I'm just asking a question. Uh, that tower up by Pleasant Lake, how many thousands of gallons do we dump because it's not getting used enough? Which brings me back to my point yeah. about 
getting that land developed out there, whatever it's going to take. And, and I agree with you, but I want to come back and say that tower, this tower, the core city and the two lakes, we're all in this together. Yes. Sir. This, this stuff about core city mm -hmm. and the two lakes has got to stop. What? Water it's enterprise. Got to water front. Water enterprise is one water enterprise for the whole the whole uh, city of Rockville. Water the sewer is slightly different. Um, it's still an enterprise fund, so it's not part of the general funds. But there are two different. Uh, anyway, there's a motion made. Yes, there is. I'm going to make one last comment, and that is prior to administrators calculated differently as it relates to the administration charge, not the administrator, but administration charge. That means when there are certain costs to go and operate, staff support, uh, public works departments and stuff like that, the prior administrator would have that as a general line item and then would not have that specifically against each one of the specific water enterprise fund or mowing the grass or whatever. Our administrator, with the blessing of our council several years ago when Mr. Bodie arrived, said for us to be able to truly calculate the true cost of operating and must have the administration portion, not the administrator. Again, I want to reiterate that. The administration of that specific one has to be allocated against each one of those different line items. That's great business. That is why we have a slight change in the numbers as they are calculated to that point. Now, we're, instead of having it in a large fund, it's being allocated, and so the part of the administration of water enterprise is added right into it, and that's what's causing our negative cash flow. I don't agree with this. And that is to each and everyone's individual one, but quite frankly, that was a change. That is a change of how we used to do it. And I see Mr. Bodie nodding his head, so that would have been assumed believing that he agreed with the comments that I just made. So to that end, we have um, a grand total of two dollars per thousand gallons that were proposed. That increase would have, if this was going to go forward, and today you've heard a motion of second, I believe it's going to be passing here in Atlanta. If we were going to have a grand total of we had a grand total of 21 million, so I have 21 million 597,260 gallons that were sold this year. Divide that by a thousand, that's uh, thousands of gallons. That would be 21, 21,597,000 gallons times the $2 would increase our revenue of $43,190. We also have had some years ago created, and Mr. Tallman was on the council at that time, when we, we made sure that we were going to have in the Water Enterprise Fund enough reserve for six months of operation, and that has not changed. So that's the goal. So we as a council need to give that directive to our administrator so that that administrator can do those numbers, and if there's a task force, I will gladly again sit on that task force. If we have more than two people, then we have open meeting law breach, then we have to have it. The way we enabled this. And so we, we have not yet voted on it. And so if we have somebody else that wants to, now is the time to go and stand up and speak and be willing to do the number crunching to verify it. To that end, any last comments? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion to table to a time certain, and that time certain is when? Postpone is, table is till next uh, action, postponed to a time certain. So there should be a time certain that's with this. Well, my, my point is that until we've got the numbers, and however not long that takes. Okay. It's that's going to take longer than a month. The motion has been made to a time certain when we have adequate information in front of this council to be able to make an informed decision. That's the motion. Okay, you need clarification, Mr. Bodie? Please proceed. Well, there's a lot of talk, Mr. Mayor, about there's no numbers, no numbers, no numbers. We I sat down with the old council and we hashed out all the old numbers. Now, the two council members are not privy to, the, to that information, not all of it. So I just want to clarify for the public that the council of 2018 and 2017 had the numbers. And I still have those numbers. Yep. But we can meet in 
again in review. Thank you for those comments. I will now call the question and that numbers, alleged, real, or whatever, that was vitally important for me to share this with you. So there is a negative cash flow. It's in paper. Read the information. Read the information that's in front of you. Every one of you. Get on the internet and look at it. It's there. RockvilleCity.org. Okay? Thank you. Now, all those in favor of the motion signify by stating aye. 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 Uh, those opposed? Same sign. Any extensions? Same none. Ask and ask. Thank you for the input. Thank you, public, for your input. Okay, we are now at. There is a number, and it's probably going to be. Oh, department reports. Is that correct? Is yes, sir. Okay, please proceed. And it appears that we do not. We have our city engineer, Justin. Give us your great words of wisdom, please. Uh, Mayor and Council, I, <clears throat> no action for you. I guess uh, regarding the 2019 street project, you already acted upon that. We'll be proceeding with uh, preparing plans and specs and bidding that out and bringing that back to you for your consideration here. Um, the only other item that I have is uh, Stickney Dairy. Um, we, uh, uh, they are present here this evening, so if you uh, so desire, you could uh, um, provide, uh, have them provide a brief update um, on where they're at with your wastewater improvement. Um, Okay, and Justin, I believe that was circulated to us a PowerPoint, but they are just basically an FYI for us, and yep. they care to uh, either up to the podium or, or a lectern or where they're at. If there's any questions, you're yielding to them right at this point? Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll just say that, uh, you know, over the last month, month and a half, we haven't had a lot of correspondence with them, or I haven't had any correspondence with them. Um, they did, I think it was four to six weeks ago, somewhere in that time frame, just had a full conversation that they are continuing with plans. Um, they had updated you guys, I think, in December, if I remember correctly. Um, and, and really, that's where things are at right now. Um, they are discharging into the city system right now. And as it currently stands, um, we have just sent them another letter reminding them of, of where we're at with, uh, with the permit, status of the permit. So, uh, what, what, uh, that, that, that being that uh, the their permit, permit was be constant for some time yet. Pardon me? You're talking to permit with Cold Spring? Yes. Okay. That's correct. It's brand new. Once it was brought up in the past, and as far as I know, that permit is still in, uh, in force at this stage of the game. It is in force, but they have been uh, given notice of a, a, of a termination on that six month termination from the date of the letter. That was. Prior to talking, or is that a prior? Right. Nothing new. From prior. Correct. Okay, got it. Please proceed. Name's Bob Primo. I'm at 19940 English Avenue in Farmington, Minnesota. I'm an advisor to uh, Sticking. Um, my apology from Glenn, you couldn't be here tonight, uh, so we thought we'd bring a quick update to you, which we've shared in writing. I kind of give you some background. Our apology for the fact that we've got a a handful of people working on this, over four or five engineering groups, uh, staff, uh, Glenn himself, as well as Eric, and a number of people on the outside that are involved in memory technology and process technology. So, apology for not summarizing that, putting it all together. If you attempt to do that in the document we share uh, with you now. Um, just a quick update on a couple of things that are happening that are real time. Uh, we have a trial run on February 18th that's going to try a reverse osmosis system. Uh, supplied by um, membrane process technologies. It's going to cost about seven thousand dollars for my trial, and it's designed to determine how well we can split up and modify the, the volume of water into higher and lower POD concentration material. Today we met with the city of St. Cloud. We talked about continuing to them. Uh, as you may recall, we met with uh, the city of um, Cold Spring and the staff here. Uh, our thanks to them because we were able to put together a plan for the cold weather months where we were still in trouble in terms of being able to put a system together fast enough. We did freeze that system back in uh, November, uh, so we are going to the city currently. And our intent is to move back out of the system and back to um, St. Cloud because we want to make sure we're in compliance. And we know that's a mandate for the council as well as from the admin. So we're in Wilson Martin, we appreciate his involvement with, with Glenn, primarily their interactions. 
these are some of my notes that I'll share. Uh, flow measurements, it will be out in uh, the next week and a half to do some work on the SCADA system in terms of delivery of information and documents, as well as the flow level, level measurement and alarms and alerts. That's part of our previous discussion about improvements. Take it away. Uh, Northwoods uh, and the programmers have been working with Eric. I'll let him talk about that. We contacted U.S. Water Services. They'll be doing jar testing of the material we do in the test run next week to determine how we can split that stream up using flocculating agents, if necessary, to better control that flow. The meeting with St. Cloud today, uh, we got a favorable uh, interaction with them, very favorable, um, and they are willing to take uh, any or all during this period, of course. Uh, up until the end of September is our current operating agreement and can't extend that to work with them to continue to work between the city of Cold Spring and St. Cloud to manage our BOD and to make sure we're staying in compliance. So that's our role, that's what this is about. Um, the alarms alerts and the SCADA system I have to review with the city uh, to make sure that we've got the SCADA information flowing now. We think we do from the um, irrigation and from the domestic use water, which you may recall. Those meters are in place and the city um, maintenance department helped us put those in. And we're now, I don't know, we'll put in the full meter SCADA transfer, so we'll have that data coming to you as well in the next couple of weeks. So that was a part of the previous list, and we'll make sure that that SCADA is operating properly. Uh, that's, for those of you who don't know what SCADA is, it's about the electronic transfer of data from the plant directly to electronic receiving uh, here at the, at the city. Um, Hydrate, which is our chemical provider, they were here today. Uh, they spent all day working on flow control, flow administration, um, systems, water flushes, water rinses. Uh, they're a partner in our work to, to reduce total water use and water discharge. Uh, so those are the three, those are the real, real things we're working on right now. As you can see, there's been a lot, and there, your list has more. And in terms of things we're doing, uh, we're also looking at uh, four different options with regard to memory technologies that may or may not work. Uh, that test next week is critical. So we'll work quickly to work toward that. Then we'll be coming back to the council to talk about uh, building permits um, and land use discussions with regard to those tanks and housing those tanks. We talked about that before uh, to protect them from next winter. So Eric, can I talk a little bit? I want Eric to just share a little bit of what's, what's happening at the plant and if you have any questions. Sure, I'm Eric Borkart, 204 Country Court in Albany, Minnesota. Um, yeah, Bob's been doing a lot of work in the plant as well as myself and Glenn. Uh, he mentioned Northwoods, our software system. We have programs in place and I'm working with them to give me more data. What causes water use, how, when we're using it, how much, why, and then which will then give me the uh, ability to control it a little more closely. Um, I don't have the software background so I'm relying on them, but uh, I do believe we'll be able to get there within the next few months where I have a lot more usable data that I can learn from and, and control some of these things. As far as the business itself goes, um, things are going quite well. We are actually about to onboard several very large customers, at least in terms of what our business is used to. Um, I'm looking at increasing our hourly staff on the floor by 50 to 80 percent potentially in new hires, um, new, new employment to a uh, our particular facility uh, to accommodate some of these customers. So that should not immediately affect our water usage, but I think it is a good thing, obviously, for our company and potentially the city having our employment base grow a little bit. Um, so we have every reason and intention to keep moving this thing forward so we can keep growing as we would like to. Turns out goat cheese is becoming more popular in the United States, um, and we want to be on the forefront of that. So um, as Bob said, Literally today, we have three different aspects of this moving. It's been an ongoing process amongst all kinds of people. I have trouble keeping track of it myself, honestly, because it's so kind of spread out. But I do believe in the next three to four weeks here, we are going to get some very, very useful data and consolidate that with a very quick plan um, to the city for approval, start the permit process <coughs> the buildings that we need, and get this taken care of and behind us. Just Frankly, we're going to be too busy to have to keep worrying about this, and we don't want this hanging over us or the council. Uh, we want to take care of it and do it the right way. So we are making progress. It's frustratingly slow even for me, um, but I do believe we are very close to getting this taken care of. Okay. Thank you for that update. Um, as you are aware, and we had a meeting out there 
to be able to get a visual aid. Uh, this is complex. Some of us are not mechanic. Most of us are mechanically inclined, but this is extremely complex. And so, if and when there's an opportunity that you feel you need to spoon feed, for lack of better words, for us to be able to make a site visit so that we can understand the changes that are being proposed. Um, we have competent staff, we have very competent uh, public works uh, and also our engineers, but for us as council members, maybe we're anal, but we need to be able to understand it so that we can make an informed decision. So I'm again asking you that when the time comes, I will be calling a meeting in a heartbeat to have it out there and inviting the public if you care to, but for us five, part of the governance team of the city of Rockwell, we want to make sure we do it this time, do we do it right. So thank you for the update and continued success on expanding your business out there. Thank you. We want to be your team partner, Greg. Right? Thank you. <coughs> okay, anything else, uh, Justin? I have nothing else unless anybody has anything for me. Thank I do you. have a one. I, I do have one, and it was Skeda, uh, and that is, do we, um, and it's, I just came back from the uh, gathering of a lot of the leading Minnesota cities leadership and some of the, the networking that we did out there. Does our, do we currently have um, in our elevated storage in the water towers, do we have mixer pumps in both of our water towers and are they functioning properly and working? And yeah. that is to prevent water freeze up. The other quick question, do we have the capabilities of monitoring water temperature in our elevated storage tanks with a, an additional SCADA module or so, so that we can, um, so that we don't have to dump that water if there's, if there's a way for us to be able to calibrate how cold is that water getting to be and if we're at close freeze up, even if this, I didn't know if we had a circulating pump. And that's what some of the other communities have, is they have a system to be able to analyze what at what point, and I think it was 38, if you remember right, I might be mistaken, 38 degrees or something, that was, uh, you know, the point where now something needs to be done, because dumping water is such a waste. But anyways, just... Yeah, currently, uh, Public Works, I believe, does a visual inspection on the inside of the water tower up at Pleasant Lake, and uh, really, the presence of ice that's in there is is really their their temperature monitoring, per, per se. Yeah. Um, because Literally climbing up the ladder. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really just uh, recirculating that water uh, enough that it doesn't doesn't completely freeze, and so they keep a close eye on during the cold times. And um, I, our public we could, directors yeah, are. we could provide. A, you know, we there's certainly probably some temperature things that we could put in there, but I'm not sure that uh, it would tell you it's 30, 33 degrees probably. So, you know, um, and we just help them maybe tell when they, exactly they need to. It would prevent them from having to climb the tower to do a visual. Yeah. yeah. Until the council we recall last month we were here and we had SCADA representative and uh, Mr. Bodie, if you care to just make a call to the SCADA people and see if that's an added value or some kind of a uh, module that could be added to our SCADA system so that we don't have that cost factor of First of all, the safety of somebody climbing it every day, if we can do that electronically, say here's the temperature, and, and they still would need to make sure that's monitoring the, uh, the uh, current uh, mixer pumps that are in there. And that was in, in brought in some years ago. Okay. Isn't that more critical in summer than this winter? What's for that? The, for the water? No, the circulating of the water, so it doesn't get stagnated. The, that's yeah, right. right. It doesn't get stagnated, and the skunky smell yeah. and all that good stuff. But, the reason I brought this up in the discussion, some of the other communities that mayors that I said with the network, and they were saying, well, this is how we solve this. And everybody has got the same dilemma, so it's not us. And it's Minnesota, it's winter, how do we save some money, but yet not jeopardize safety or not, you know, we need to have water. And if it has to be dumped, it has to be dumped, but there's a, there's a way. So, well, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much for your reports. Any questions of any of the council members of Justin? Being done, we're going to continue. Under administration, I, I like to add on the public works here. Oh, I had uh, one of the emails I received today in regards to like the water that was a comment regarding snow point people pushing snow across the road. It's a state 
large that you cannot push snow across the public road or you must push off the road. Uh, being up and you can be fined if the damage up to seven hundred dollars for leaving on there could could have caused an accident and be liable for damages. Now the person that call I don't know exactly where but the call a lot of times the snow was pushed off after our plow had gone through. And speaking from experience plowing in the township there are I've encountered piles too there. They get them not all the way off the road on the edge. And once they get hard they uh they will move your big truck a little bit. So I mean, if you see neighbors are doing it, remind them, don't leave it on the road or push it off even further if they can. And the other one is now with all the snow here is uh, a lot of people put your marker stickers up to show where you're on. You don't want your saw to get ripped up or scraped. Well, the snow is at the point now that your stakes are probably going to get pushed off and you're not going to get really scraped on your grass because the ground is froze. So we have to have a place to push the snow. So. If that happens, you know, they're going to go as far up to the stake and be a little past it, but we have to do it in order to uh, move the snow. The main thing is, if you see people that pile of snow on the road, remind them, or if you're doing it, try not to do it or get it way into the ditch so we don't have some person in it, a citizen, or our snow plow gets wrecked. But like uh, Carol said, I'm glad we had comments because probably snow, you usually don't get comments that you do a good job. So. We'll definitely pass it on to her. I would publicly thank our snow crew. Yeah. They're doing an absolutely fantastic yeah, right. job. They've been going night and day. Yeah. I did a did a rose comments. Okay. Thanks, Don. Yep. Um, item number ten, appropriations, allocation, and transfers. I do not believe there's anything at this nope. stage of the game, so there's no council action needed on that. Under number eleven, we'll have a couple of quick things. RTCB. I was not there. I got a report back from Mr. Bodie. Um, they have a new chair and there's a rotating of chairs, but no other things other than we want to have anybody that has interaction with your state representatives and senators to continue to put leverage on them to make sure that there's funding that comes through. We have federal tap funding for the recording trails um, that is going to have a sunset if we do not use it by a certain time. And so we, and then the, the numbers are not clear in my mind tonight. I was not at that meeting, but uh, it's incumbent upon us. And then one of the other things that comes with that, if we have a go ahead so that that gap of the trail is finalized, then there has been an effort to have a park um, or a um, trail head. What do you call it when you start off at a you know, there, Trail, trailhead, trailhead there. I almost had it spilled on. A trailhead, and that's the concession stand, so that that, or the concession building, so that would be a, a joint effort of using it for year round, or at least a big portion of the year, a little longer. And that's for another day. Uh, ordinance review. Thank God, thank God, thank God. We have had enormous amount of efforts. These council members here, plus the prior council members, plus um, four um, task force and their representatives, and then we morphed the fifth entity into there, and that's the short-term rental. I see the audience tonight, some of the folks that were in that the task force. The final review has been done by our council as of this past Monday, just two days ago. So now the portion that needs to go to um, the um, a portion, the ordinance uh, that is relating to, I'm. Dinner. Yes, and I've, had a, I've got flu bug on me, and I've got to be off to the doctor in the morning with an issue, so I'm, I'll make it here. But anyway, so the DNR is going to be doing that, and then our legal counsel is going to be, well, first of all, back to the city administ administration. We'll have Cynthia look at it, then we will have our legal counsel review that, and then in due process, we will, the council will have another public hearing for last public input, and then we will put that um, into action. And so each and every one who has been involved in this time, it has been a horrendous task. It was initiated in 2003. This is the first major rewrite or update. So again, when the time comes, I'll give it accolades if I'm still around at that point. It might take another year or two, who knows, but I think it's close. RTU, um, let's see, Chair Don, are you there? Yeah. Uh, with basically, we would have heard from just, but go ahead, please. Basically, we discussed what we had this uh, 
joint venture with on all those roads, one of the roads with St. Augustine, we came up to conclusion on this resolution that we, what we go forward with. Uh, we picked up three new members, and I cannot remember all their names. We, but we got good input from them. We had the discussion at this meeting. So I think we're making progress. We're also searching a ways that we can get more projects done with the bucks we have here. So, but I'm a very informed, I think with Justin working on the project, if not, we should be sitting pretty fine. Great. To that end, there was three, and we did that at the workshop, and uh, properly went through the process, and I think it's a golden opportunity at this point. Uh, two of the prior RTU members happen to be in the building this evening, and now would be a great time to thank those, and that is Pat Welly and my wife Diane Willenbury served on the RTU from the inception until this point. So thank you to uh, for your services thus far and the new RTU week, and we wish you well. So to that end, um, let's see, under others, is there anything that needs to, anything else, Donnie? Or no, no questions? No? no? Okay. Um, the RTU is a group of individuals that help the public works, our engineering, and our public works, uh, and our city administrator to analyze which are the highest or the low-hanging fruit that needs to be fixed next so that we as a council don't have to have the, the pulse as closely. And that RTU committee does a phenomenal job. So thank you again. Under others, anything else that needs to be added? If not, before we adjourn, and it will be very shortly, two or three, two or three comments. They will be short and sweet. One of them is the COLA issue. To the public, I have no one else to blame but me. I was at that meeting, I should have known, but I missed it. It morphed from a simple question of our city administrator asking us to have dialogue, discussion. There's nothing wrong with that. We made the mistake of actually having a motion in a second, and it passed. Okay, it's in the minutes. Now, to the council members. We have had a long-standing tradition of not allowing additions to the agenda after it has been circulated. Unless in an emergency, in recent months, that long-standing tradition has morphed into something completely different. This must cease. Unless it is an emergency, what comes out on that agenda, that's what we're going to have. We need to have time to digest. Most meetings, are on Wednesday, the second Wednesday. It's a tradition to have that information to all of us, not just the council, but the public, by Friday close of business. We're going to revert back to that, and we will never ever allow something like this to happen again when we don't give the public the opportunity to have their voice. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Bill, seconded by Don. Motion to adjourn is not debatable. All those in favor of motion.